Greetings travelers, roofers, tin men, handymen, putting this tin roof on uh, Red Kelly's cottage workshop. Got our framing in place, except for a little special area in the back there I'll show you. I've got some pieces of tin up here. They're not fastened. I just lay uh, three or four pieces down and see what's going on. You know, after you measure and you frame and you block and everything, you get the tin up there and something's not right. It's better to do, put a few pieces down and see what's going on instead of starting, starting here and fasten it all down. Put all the screws down and then keep moving and then you find you need to fudge it a little bit. And you can move them a quarter inch a little bit to get where you want. What we got here is a 30 gauge tin. It's galvanized metal, we call it tin. I got a little trim piece to go on the top of that edge against the building, against the garage. And we've added a piece of clear plexiglass, or vinyl, I don't know what it is, it's plastic. Corrugated plastic. So we're gonna make a little skylight with that. And then the rest of it's tin. And the uh, framing's up. Seems to be holding without mid-span blocking. Now someday, if this tin wants to be removed, you could uh, go with plywood, tar paper, composition shingles, gutters. You could do it all. But the, the two by fours are placed uh, correctly, I should say, spaced and blocked and anchored. And I'll show you more about that inside. All right, we're inside. We're starting to get some shade with our panels. It's going to be nice and cool in here when they go up. The uh, old roof had a nice pitch to it, so it be good for draining. And we're going with a uh, the tin the framing overhangs the walls about ten inches and our tin overhangs the framing by three inches. So it should be pretty good as far as keeping the weather out. Now the purpose of this uh this room, this shop, is gonna be for crafts doing crafts and stuff. Also, it's going to be a, a playroom for Kitty. Uh, I forget the cat's name, but uh, the homeowner would like to get a door on it and make sure it's cat proof and leave the cat out here during the day instead of cooped up in the house. So our purpose here is to make it weather tight and cat proof so Kitty doesn't get out so, I'll show you a little bit of the, uh, what we call the rafter plate. That's what I'm calling it. It's what the rafters sit on. It's a two by four. There you are. You're rolling. You're rolling. So we have two by four and I have, uh, tap cons drilled into the block, had a little adhesive and a tap con screw every four feet or so. We're not going crazy with all kinds of anchors and stuff, but that's the blocking. Just five minutes ago, the sun was hitting this thing. You wouldn't be able to see. Down on the eastern wall of the shop, we have a special area. At the top there, you see there's missing block, corroded, deteriorated block, but that's okay. I've mounted a two by four to get started. We'll run a rafter across there. I'm missing a couple more rafters. And any uh, openings there, I have extra tin 
we'll tack some tin up against it so kitty doesn't get out and this uh this last four feet of this roof is going to be open with some lattice so it'll rain on this end in, into the shop it's the design we've come up with but the lattice will keep other critters out and keep kitty in and i've added i'm going to add some uh, screen the heavy duty uh window screen uh to the four four by eight piece of lattice to keep the mud mud daubers out and whatnot but the rain will drip down into this area this old box here has got to go this is some junk but uh, we'll be we'll be pretty much weather tight three quarters of this now uh, we found here in Red Kelly's shop a floor drain and uh, I've checked the toilet before and uh, the sewer is clear run a lot of water through it so right down here is a uh, floor drain and we'll vacuum it out and run some water through it the concrete is sloped to it so any water that gets in here can go down the drain and also in the future we have a pipe over here in the corner that's coming out of the garage don't know what the pipe is is it a gas pipe or a water pipe well, I assume it's a water pipe but anyways we'll incorporate it once they uh, get a meter a water meter and get the utilities hooked up to the cottage and back in this corner will be the outdoor shower it's, that's kind of a Florida thing isn't it the outdoor showers but where those pipes are, we'll have a outdoor shower hooked up to the water heater and whatnot. And then a dirty, nasty handyman can come in here and take a shower instead of the homeowner's nice bathroom. So that'll be nice. You could wash your doggy in here too. Because we've got a lot of debris and stuff. And that's what's going on. Now, how, how are we cutting that tin, you ask? I know you're asking. How are we cutting that tin? Well, you take some shears and you just start cutting. No, no, no. These are okay for notches and, and little, little trimmy things. But I'll show you how I cut the tin. Okay, we got our tin. We got our tin measured. And you're gonna definitely gonna need some Googles. That thing spits sparks. Got Googles. Gonna need muffs. Check your volume when I start. And you cut it with the good old worm drive we got the worm drive with a metal cutting blade it has a lot of teeth for a fine cut got a lot of teeth and it just goes through that tin like butter knee gloves too Straddle your work. Ouch! Little sparklies are hitting my bare legs. So that's how we cut it.
click fast. It's a it's a tin job. So you're gonna need some gloves, some googles, and some ear protection. It's also good to do this when it's 95 degrees out. They say, Kev, it's gonna be nice and cool up there in Tennessee. No, it's been 95 all week, so but we trudge along. Now what's going on with the with the pinky Marie? There's that piece of lattice underneath the pinky Marie that we'll put on the last four feet of the roof. And we'll show you all this when we're done, but let's go check out the pinky Marie. I told you it's all dolled up. Oh yeah. It really puts the she in she shed. The Pinky Marie has new upholstery covers. Homeowner sewed those. So she got a little life fixture and you'll notice the theme is pink and flamingos. Kind of a Florida feel. Got all kinds of tchotchkes. She made her little curtains. Tiny radio. Oh, it's just it's just all set, ready to go. Come out here and have a box of wine and read a book. Now that's a that's not a that's not a pillow on the floor. That's a footstool. So you're sitting in your chair over here. You need something for your feet to sit on. What about the bedroom, Kev? Well, here's here's the little sink area. See, there's a sink under here. Oh, here's the bedroom. Look at that. Fancy, huh? I declare that the Pinky Marie is the best she shed in Lenore City, Tennessee. That's my opinion. We've yet to see any others. If you know somebody's got a she shed in the area, I think you're got competition here a little bookshelf up top there for all your Nancy Drew mysteries Hardy Boys got a little shadow box with knickknacks of course you got your Florida pillow Well, that's the Pinky Marie She Shed. You know, fellows, Christmas is coming. If your lady friend, your dear wife, your bride, needs something for Christmas, 
a 64 Shasta done up like this real crowd favorite moms love it all right coastal kev out we got to get back out in the heat tack down that tin got rain coming in two days i think we'll be ready all right coastal kev out from the pinky marie lenore city tennessee